Hi, my name is Lucille Davier and I'm a lecturer in Translation Studies at the University of Geneva, Switzerland. Today I'm happy to introduce my research about journalists dealing with bilingualism and translation. With this first slide, I'd like to introduce my conceptual framework. For Wenger, a community of practices formed by colleagues working together on a daily basis. These colleagues pursue a joint enterprise. In the case I present, this is making news for the public broadcaster in Canada. They also share a repertoire, so discourses about language and bilingualism. Those discourses and their impact on the practice is exactly what I'm interested in. On the next slide, you'll see a visual representation of a constellation of practices. In other words, the interactions between various communities of practice. The circle in the center represents the community of practice that I'm investigating in this presentation, a journalist working for Radio Canada in Ottawa. These journalists share their newsroom with CBC reporters who are English speaking. They receive complaints from their audiences by email, on social media, etc. And in the field, they are in touch with other journalists and with sources, of course. Another concept I'm using here is the concept of risk management, which is applied to translation studies by Matsushita and Pim. In her doctoral dissertation, Matsushita spells out four types of risks. Risk towards the source, towards the target, risks in terms of credibility, and in terms of communication. My focus for this presentation is the risk expressed by the journalists of losing the trust of their audiences. To gather my data, I visited three newsrooms in Ottawa, Canada over a year. I'm only presenting the data from one newsroom today. I conducted 12 semester structured interviews, seven sessions of observation, and collected internal as well as public documents with 15 individual participants. I collected my data at ICI Radio Canada, uh, which is the French language network of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. I went into one of its regional newsrooms, which is located at, in the national capital city of Ottawa. The reporters I met are producing news for various platforms every day, radio, TV, a website, and social networks. For you to understand the context of bilingualism, it is important to see the geographical location of Ottawa. As the capital city of a bilingual country, Ottawa lies at the border between the French-speaking province of Quebec and the English-speaking province of Ontario. Although there is official bilingualism at the federal level, the Canadian provinces are monolingual. However, 16% of Francophones live in Ottawa, Ontario, while 17% of English speakers live in Gatineau, Quebec. For this presentation, I'm asking which are the strategies of ICI Radio Canada reporters as a community of practice to deal with the risks posed by bilingualism and translation. To start with, you may wonder what bilingual journalistic practice looks like. In the first example, a reporter producing a radio story may meet English-speaking representatives in the field ask them questions in English to understand the background and edit a radio clip in French on the basis of information obtained in English only. In the second example, a digital journalist may use audio or video material in English as the source of quotes for a story in English. She would then do what Happenen calls translingual quoting, so translate the quotes and write the story around them. You may also wonder what the risk of bilingual practice are. For all of my 12 interviewers, it's very clear. The only risk is to have interferences. This risk is all the higher because Radio Canada's mission is to maintain high standards of French. In a region where the rates of bilingualism are so high that some of the francophones need to, to take French classes to write without mistakes. The community has developed many tools of risk mitigation to guarantee the high quality of written and spoken French. Radio Canada has in-house linguists who develop an intranet site with specific language, language resources for the journalists. 
In the newsroom, the managing editor selects a few journalists with an excellent mastery of French to help their colleagues. The managers put strong emphasis on self-revision with a professional spell checker before submitting the stories to vetting. And reporters also use high quality French dictionaries on a regular basis. Because of the speed expected in digi digital news, digital journalists don't go through vetting before publishing their stories. The vetters just cannot check all stories as they go out on the website. To mitigate the incurred risks, they start their day by editing the stories that are read by most people at a given time. They also rely on the feedback of audiences that are very picky on the quality of French. For instance, anyone can click on a button at the end of the story to report a typo. Another strategy to manage risk is to avoid them altogether, especially for broadcast stories. Reporters do their best to try and find sources that can speak at least a couple of sentences in French for a radio or video clip, as illustrated in this interview quote. I'd say that for broadcast news, more than digital news, we tend to avoid English language clips so that we don't have to translate, said a digital reporter. This information was confirmed by all my participants. More than a strategy of risk mitigation, this choice is presented as an identity statement. Radio Canada has to showcase people who actually speak French. To conclude, I'd say that bilingualism and translation are seen as a source of risks for the quality of French because of interferences, rather than the quality of translations. Risks are mitigated by collaboration among colleagues in the community of practice, but also across communities, for instance, with members of the audience. And these results, I'd like to remind you, have to be understood and interpreted in a context of subtractive bilingualism, so where the A language, French, is threatened by the B language, English. The journalists I met all aligned with the mandate of Radio Canada to protect French from the influence of English. Their language ideologies therefore have a strong influence on their professional practice. Here's my bibliography if you want to have a look at my references. And thank you very much for watching.